Thanks for listening to the Wild Health Podcast. For the foreseeable future, you're not going to hear our normal intro or outro here. We're going to be releasing episodes very frequently as things are changing. This channel will be used for a very specific purpose. Number one, to communicate with our patients. We're somewhat overwhelmed, and the more we can communicate breaking news and recommendations from us to our patients all at once, the better. So if you're a patient, we're here for you if you need us. But if possible, please tune in here so we can both keep you up to date and conserve our time for the most critical tasks. Feel free to share this with friends and colleagues as well. Number two, we've organized as a group. We have infectious disease specialists, ER doctors, critical care doctors, and in total dozens of MDs, PhDs, and frontline clinicians who are going to be constantly evaluating the news and emerging evidence. We're then going to summarize and translate that for you here every day on the podcast. The speed of change with the circumstances will make us look foolish at times, but we're committed to pouring all of our resources and energy into doing what we can to help and make a difference. You can also follow our updates at wildhealth.com or our Instagram account at wildhealthmd. And if you're a patient, we're here for you. Please tune in here for the updates and let us know how we can help. Today's podcast, uh, I've got a quick update for our patients first from Dr. Jeremy Stitch, just some protocols and things. If you're not one of our patients, you can skip over that if you'd like. Uh, and then I've got a quick interview as well, just an update from abroad. Two friends of ours, Chris and Johannes. Chris is a close friend uh, in Stockholm, Sweden. We've taught many courses with Chris. He's an ICU doctor. And Johannes is an infectious disease doctor. Uh, he is in Sweden at the moment, but he just got back from France where he's been. So they're going to talk about the experience there and give us any tips as they can on how to stay safe uh, from a patient standpoint and then also what to do from a provider standpoint as well. Welcome back. We appreciate you tuning in. I'm Dr. Jeremy Stitch and today we want to speak to our patients and our clients uh, about our office policy updates and our COVID testing updates. So this is specifically again to our patients. We want to give you guys some protocols for um, what we're doing and how we're handling this. So I want to start off by saying we actually think that there is a better way to handle sick visits in general, not just during this outbreak, um, but all the time to reduce the transmission of infectious diseases. We also have decided to make some pretty revolutionary changes during this crisis. So specifically, let's talk about what that looks like for office visits. Uh, during this pandemic, we have two goals. Number one, we want to utilize telemedicine to eliminate routine office visits. And number two, we want to initiate all sick visits via telemedicine. Statistics vary, but um, it's estimated that telemedicine can replace 60 to 70% of in-person visits. And it can also help us to determine whether it is appropriate or necessary to recommend in-office visits. So say somebody needs a procedure, we can screen them for infectious diseases that might limit uh, the exposure of other people. Finally, if you are one of our patients, you are currently able to utilize our secure HIPAA compliant telemedicine app. We have robust experience with this, so please take advantage of it if you're one of our patients. Next, I want to address COVID testing. We are covering the cost of testing for our patients, but supplies are not infinite at the moment. We have had fulfillment issues, but we are confident that we have enough tests for everyone if we utilize them appropriately. We have also ordered a very advanced PCR machine for our biotech lab to give results within about 30 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, we are at the mercy of shipping and logistics here. Our hope is to have this up and running within two to three days. Uh, we are pretty committed to provide more thorough screening to help us determine the real prevalence in the community. But let's address what to do if you specifically have symptoms or need to be screened. Uh, first, you can begin by calling the office or texting your provider directly. Staff or your clinician will then send you a COVID screening or can verbally complete the COVID screening assessment on the phone. It takes about one to two minutes to complete. Uh, the clinician will then schedule a telemedicine visit and we can do that via video chat, via the telephone, or even using secure text messaging. We use this all the time and there's no reason not to apply it appropriately for medical care. 
Um, I should emphasize here that the highest risk patients are those who have been exposed to COVID-19 with symptoms plus susceptibility. Susceptibility currently includes ages greater than 80, age greater than 70 with heart or lung problems, immunocompromised state, or serious underlying lung disease. Think about oxygen dependence. Uh, we are committed to and will expand testing capability as quickly as possible. And currently the tests uh, will consist of a swab that will be mailed to you or obtained in your car where appropriate. Uh, finally, I want to talk about if you are a new patient, uh, you will be sent a swab with instructions to store this and then contact your physician to determine when and if to test, if symptoms should develop. Finally, I want to emphasize that we believe these changes can extend beyond this pandemic, that we can learn some lessons here um, and utilize telemedicine to accomplish three goals. Number one, to improve efficiency for our patients. Number two, to improve accessibility to care in general. And number three, to reduce the transmission of all infectious diseases moving forward in the office. Thank you for tuning in and please keep tuned to the podcast for more updates. Chris and Johannes, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Chris, I haven't seen you in a while. I can't, did, was it Stockholm last or was it here in Lexington last time? Uh, Lexington. Yeah. Lexington, so it's been a few years though. And Johannes, yeah. we met in Stockholm at Yasaragi, right? Is that the first yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It must be yeah. like six years. Six, six or seven, seven years, years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I haven't been uh, in Stockholm for quite some time, and even if I'd been there in the last year, it sounds like things are a lot different in Sweden, where you are, Chris, and then also in Paris, uh, where you've been recently quite a bit, Johannes. So Chris is a uh, critical care doctor uh, in Sweden, uh, incredible physician in internal medicine and critical care, and Johannes is an infectious disease specialist, internal medicine physician, and working with some really high-level microbiologists uh, or bacteriologists there in Paris as well. I just want to ask you a really quick a couple questions. How are things going there? What is the experience right now in, in Paris and then in Sweden as well? Yeah, uh, to start with uh, Sweden then where we are, we are now, uh, it's a uh, national uh, crisis uh, where people are reacting uh, everyone's affected by it uh, from from whatever you do so just one example there's uh, it was impossible for me uh, to get toilet paper uh, uh, without traveling an hour at least an hour uh, yesterday because all the shelves in every store is empty there's no, no one goes to any restaurant. It, it's like a, like an, an apocalypse uh, feeling going on in, in Stockholm now, for real. And I'm assuming in Paris, it's uh, probably a similar situation. As I understand, there's, uh, it's pretty much it's locked down there right now. Correct, Johannes? I mean, yeah. The thing is, I I left Paris in last Friday, which was a planned trip uh, to to do a course with Chris. And um, things moved enormously quickly. I mean, people were, uh, like, especially healthcare professionals, were taking real-time adaptive measures. Uh, there have been, for example, separate triage uh, lines or, or pathways in the emergency departments uh, for a while now. So, so people were aware and monitoring closely. Testing practices varied a lot of, across the different countries but um, there was an awareness but the population was completely unaffected uh, you, uh, quite different from Sweden or Germany for example where people have been stockpiling uh, toilet paper for example that wasn't really the case in, in France yet but in three days the situation has changed completely I, I'm only seeing it from abroad now and I'm actually not sure whether I can get back uh, as planned and um, yeah it's pretty much a lockdown now correct yeah so I, I w what I worry about is um, first off, it, it's great to talk to you. I'm glad that you're doing well per personally, um, even though things aren't great there. Um, it's just good to talk to you. But I worry that your situation, what you just described, is um, going to repeat itself uh, here in the U.S. So I appreciate any kind of advice or guidance you have. Are there any 
I guess two things I would ask you. Number one, as far as taking care of patients, is there any, are there any things that you all have learned uh, that you can share, which isn't really kind of out there widely disseminated? Any pearls for us taking care of patients? That's the first question I would have for you. Yeah, the first the first thing is to keep your distance when while triaging the the patients. If you if you're gonna try to to uh, stay uninfected at least for a couple of days, keep your distance. Uh, so set up a, a some some kind of uh, uh, some kind of system that works uh, like a uh, keeping your your eight or whatever feet it actually it is to triage the patients. Uh, uh, but the main problem we've been having, and every hospital in Sweden are, uh, is having, is that uh, to take care of the, the sick patients, um, where you actually, I don't think we actually can cover ourselves enough to, for this virus. And, and uh, to be mentally prepared that every healthcare professional might or and or will be uh, infected by, by the coronavirus but we most of the time are healthy so we'll we'll just have to uh, to uh, accept that and work for a while meanwhile uh, and then the next side is gonna uh, take over from us that's my that's my feeling I've already got a sore throat and I, <laughs> I guess I have corona but but Hmm. That, I, 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 know, worries about it. I mean, that fits with everything we're, we're reading, but to uh, hear from a close friend who I trust like you, I know you're a great, great clinician. Um, it just confirms our need to really have the social distancing and as a provider, take care of ourselves. We just released a podcast with Scott Weingart this morning about how to do that as well. So I'll refer people to that for even more details. Um, yeah. What about, what about taking care of patients? Uh, are there any specific things you've been surprised about that have been, Helpful. Yeah, that, that, helpful that, that there's no, there's been like a list of symptoms where they compare the influenza or a normal normal cold and stuff like that that have been circulating around. But our COVID cases has they've had no of those symptoms or one of those symptoms or or just being carriers of it, even though they crashed and and actually died the the days after and stuff. So. You can't go. You can't rely on any of the specific symptoms, like the, for me, idiotic idea that you shouldn't, that you can't sneeze if you have the corona or something like that, which, yes. which really spread around Sweden. So if you sneeze, it isn't corona. That was one of the ideas that was going, that was spreading super fast. So it's really difficult to identify these people based on symptomatology. It's yeah, like yeah, saying, yeah. You, you so in the test. beginning, in the beginning, we. Just one, just, uh, I'll tell you, just uh, last Friday when, when I worked, we tested almost everyone. Uh, uh, no, sorry, like one and a half weeks ago, uh, we, we tested almost everyone who came in. Now, we only test the, the very sick ones that we have to admit. Even medical staff we, uh, who, who won't be admitted, uh, I mean, even medical staff who are sick but won't don't need admission, they won't be tested. Why That's that? you're just assuming you're just assuming they have it at this point, Chris. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. So, what was exactly. the what was the prevalence when you were testing everybody? What how what what percentage were you finding were positive? Uh, like uh, two in two in fifty or something. So one in twenty five, something like that. PCRs, yeah. But but the the uh, one of our problems here in Sweden is that influenza B and A and RS virus is uh, spread uh, has been uh, circulating circulating uh, a lot. So I mean it confuses everyone, of course, and everyone gets the same symptoms. So but we've have had so many confirmed the cases of that as well, and they need the same care, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, they get the care basically. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I know we don't have a lot of time. I know um, you, you all said there was someone in uh, Italy we should talk to as well, so we'll do that later. Um, but is, is there any any big uh, last kind of piece of advice that you would give us, uh, just the general public uh, in America as well? Anything that just from your experience that 
you think we really need to be thinking about and doing more than just the social distancing, of course? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure you clinicians are more aware, uh, extremely aware of this, but what you should worry about at least as, lo as much as about the coronavirus uh, disease p patients are the patients with other conditions, either pre-existing or or newly uh, incident in conditions that need immediate treatment. Chris has to told me that they've had some delay in uh, in management of, of uh, coronary system, uh, um, syndrome, for example, acute coronary syndromes. And I think that's that's really something I'm personally worried about, that the system will be as so overwhelmed at some point that simply people who need urgent care for other conditions will not get it. And then you, you'll have all that collateral damage um, which is why we need to flatten the, the curve of the outbreak, which is the only thing we can do. You can't stress that enough, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I've, I'm sure you're completely aware, but that deserves to be repeated a lot. Now. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's great advice because, I mean, when we talk about flattening the curve, obviously individuals, it, 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 there's not a whole lot they can do, but, but, it, but if you, you are an individual, this is a great point. Even if you're staying home, even if you're not being exposed take care of yourself. Don't, don't yeah. do anything dangerous. That's going to lend, lend to you ending up in the hospital. Um, this is a time to really make sure you just stay safe, not just from the coronavirus, but you don't want to be in a medical system that's overwhelmed and need treatment. No, but, but also what we saw, uh, for example, last Friday, just four days ago when I worked, it was less than half of the, the regular patient, patients that uh, sought out uh, emergency care in my ER, which is the biggest ER in, in Stockholm. So I guess at least 25% of them actually might needed, might have needed urgent care, but they stayed home instead. So I'm, I, I don't know what happened with them. Maybe they, they're well now, or maybe they, they're, uh, they're their urinary UTI is getting, uh, becoming a, a I'm in a fright just now or something like that, right? So uh, that's another thing as well. So, so take <laughs> watch out for other symptoms, but and but the other thing also behave to each other, pay respect to your neighbors, uh, help help your old elderly neighbors. The the hoarding and the uh, stockpiling that's been going on here is way beyond anything we've ever experienced in Sweden and and how people just look at each other and, and behave uh, 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 is uh, something this coronavirus actually brings out the, the best and the worst in people in a way that I've never experienced before. So there you have it, the advice from Dr. Chris Muir's Be Kind. Um, I love that. We're going to leave with that. That wasn't, as an ICU doctor with the credentials you have, I, um, I really appreciate the medical advice, but I think that's a great way to end as well. I'm going to check back with you all soon, but thanks for taking a few minutes just to share your experiences there in uh, Sweden and France. Thanks, Matt. Take care. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for listening to the Wild Health Podcast. For the foreseeable future, you're not going to hear our normal intro or outro here. We're going to be releasing episodes very frequently as things are changing. This channel will be used for a very specific purpose. Number one, to communicate with our patients. We're somewhat overwhelmed, and the more we can communicate breaking news and recommendations from us to our patients all at once, the better. So if you're a patient, we're here for you if you need us. But if possible, please tune in here so we can both keep you up to date and conserve our time for the most critical tasks. Feel free to share this with friends and colleagues as well. Number two, We've organized as a group. We have infectious disease specialists, ER doctors, critical care doctors, and in total dozens of MDs, PhDs, and frontline clinicians who are going to be constantly evaluating the news and emerging evidence. We're then going to summarize and translate that for you here every day on the podcast. The speed of change with the circumstances will make us look foolish at times, but we're committed to pouring all of our resources and energy into doing what we can to help and make a difference. You can also follow our updates at wildhealth.com or our Instagram account at wildhealthmd. And if you're a patient, we're here for you. Please tune in here for the updates and let us know how we can help.